the Joan Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview, the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. In the studio, waiting to be profiled, is singer Lilius White and tea purveyor Tomislav Padreka. Singer performer Lilius White hit the Broadway jackpot in 1997 when she was featured as Sonia in The Life. She won the Drama Desk, the Outer Circle Critics, and the People's Choice Awards and then topped it off with a Tony Award. She appeared off Broadway in Dinah Was, Waiting for Godot, and then got another award, the Obie, for Romance uh, in Hard Times. On tour, she was in Dream Girls, and she took home a drama log. And for her work in Sesame Street, she took home an Emmy Award. <laughs> Are these all trophies? Where do you keep them, Lilius? They're in various places. I have the Tony <laughs> here with me in LA. <laughs> And um, the other stuff is in New York. And the, do you have them all displayed? <laughs> I have them displayed, and some of them are, you know, they're, st they're still not framed, um, waiting for that big house, you know, to put it in. Well, you do go by coastal then. Yes, I am. I'm by coastal right now. I go back and forth to New York, and uh, and that's the way it has to be right now until I get something that'll keep me here permanently. But at least when you do all this Broadway stuff, you have a place in New York. Absolutely. And you don't have to worry about finding a place. Yes, that's true. And, and do you find when you're working in New York, L.A. is calling you? And, LA call, and New York calls you when you're in yeah, L.A.? Yeah, that's the way it's been working out lately. Is it? Yeah. Because you're in L.A. now. You've done a lot of charity work. Yes, I have. I've done uh, several benefits. Um, and. It seems like as soon as I finish doing one of those, then I get called to do a paying gig in New York. <laughs> so um, I've been going back and forth a lot. It comes back. Yes. Reading your bio and reading all of the roles you've played, I figured you were about 105 years old. Well, <laughs> there's some days I feel like that. <laughs> you've done so much work. Yes. I've been busy. I've been blessed. You know, and I, I keep I keep at it because um, this is how I make my bread and butter. I've got two kids to support, and um, and I, I love doing what I do. You did this um, CD, which is Brooklyn to Broadway. Yes, it's uh, live. It was recorded live at a place called Archie's Place in New York City. Uh, on Park Avenue South and 31st Street and we recorded it over five evenings and then it was edited and uh, so it's a live album from Brooklyn to Broadway kind of chronicles how I got from my grandmother's table in Brooklyn to the Broadway stage. Oh, that's what we want to know. The other night when you were singing at the Cinegrill, I heard you tell part of that story yes. and you talked about your kind of very proper my mother. bread mother yes. <laughs> and your aunt Yes, my aunt was one of the first black dancers with the June Taylor Dance Company that was on the Jackie Gleason show. And she was Lilius? She's Lilius, yes. I wondered, where did she get that name? Is it a... She was named in South Carolina uh, by some nuns who were either Scandinavian or German oh. descent, and uh, they gave her the, Lili the name Lilius Anderson. Her middle name is Anderson. So she, she didn't have a family? Or she was just in the convent? Oh, no, or? no, she, no, she, my <laughs> grandmother, you know, she had a family, but um, they, they all attended Catholic Church, and uh, they, they were born, my aunts and uncles and my mother were born on uh, an army post, and oh. so there were lots of nuns there, and, <laughs> oh, and they were Catholics, and so the nuns gave her this name. And they gave her a last name, too? <laughs> that's no, no, no that, that's the middle name. Oh, they gave her the that's middle name? That's the middle name, name. it's I Anderson, see. and Anderson is a Scandinavian name. I see, yes. So we, we don't know exactly where it came from, where Lilius came from, but we think that Lilius is Scandinavian in nature as well. One of the, the, the great things you said was about after dinner, tell us that story. Yes, after, uh, this fantastic dinner that my grandmother would make and the homemade ice cream and the peach cobbler and all that good stuff. Uh, my grandmother would have my grandfather clear the table 
and his gig was to wash the dishes. He had to wash the dishes every single time, every day. And so they'd clear the table and my grandmother would say, okay, now my baby's gonna sing and dance. And she'd put me up on her dining room table and I would perform for my family. And then they said, you look like well, <laughs> I think that's a cute story. I, I, I imitated Shirley Temple, <laughs> and um, I, I did uh, numbers from Broadway shows. My mother would always buy us oh, right. um, Broadway soundtracks, and so I had the soundtrack albums in my, in my house, and I would get in my mirror in my living room, and I would be Tony and Maria and Anita in West Side Story, and I'd be the professor and, uh, and uh, the woman in, in uh, My Fair Lady. Oh, yes. And... Uh, had, had you been to see any of these plays? Or did you just hear the music? I heard the music. I heard the music. But my mother would take us always to Radio City Music Hall. So we got to see the Rockettes, and we got to see you know, the wonderful Christmas show that they have there that is still a really great show to go so see. So you had a sense of theater, even though you could sing and you heard the, the tapes at that time and were performing on your own. So, were you making up your own choreography is what I was oh, wondering. Oh, absolutely. I, I had, and I had wigs. Oh, you did? I had wigs and I, I wore wigs and I would turn the wigs around to make a different style and, uh, and my mother would buy 45s and I would see all these different acts on Ed Sullivan's show and oh, we so also went to the Fox Theater in Brooklyn. Downtown Brooklyn, there was a place called the Fox Theater, and they used to have all of these great stars lined up. You could see all at one time Marvin Gaye, Tammy Terrell, oh. the, uh, the Marvelettes, Martha Reeves and the Vandellas. Really? All of these people you could see on one, in one show. But that was not Broadway. And no. you ended up doing Broadway, a lot of Broadway. Yes. And did you, you auditioned for many roles, I think, um, Cats. Yes, I played Grisbella in Cats. Look, just let me tell you one thing. I, I've seen Cats maybe 12 times and every time Grisabella sings that song I cry yeah is it it what is it about that song well it's um memory it's a it's a longing kind of of of, sh of song uh, it, she's reminiscing about her days when she was the beautiful cat on the block and when everybody loved her and now she's tattered and torn and people are the other cats are hissing <laughs> at her <laughs> I know yeah and then you auditioned for um, How to Succeed. Yes, I performed in How to Succeed with Matthew Broderick. How to Succeed at Business Without Trying. Yes. And then there was one show, The Life, yes. that you got your Tony and all these other great awards. Did you audition for that? Well, I was a part of the, the cast of The Life for uh, seven years. The Life uh, had... Um, we, we had workshops and we had uh, oh. backers auditions to, to raise the money to, to actually mount it on Broadway. Took that and long? And it took that long to get the money together and to make changes in the script and changes in the music until finally everything was together, the money was together and everything was together and we were able to put the show on. But I, I hung in there with it for seven years. But I think one Because the, the role was created for me, the role of Sonia. That's what I was gonna ask you about. Yes. What was that role? How? how? Uh, Sonia is a hooker. And she's been a hooker for too many years. And she's very tired. But at this point, there's nothing else that she can do. And Sonia is, um, is best friends with another hooker named Queen. And the story that happens in the life could be, it could be two nurses, or it could be two waitresses. It's not necessarily about hookers, but it's about the camaraderie and about two women coming together to help each other out in, in desperate situations. How well did you know the person who wrote the music and, and the book? Very well. Cy Coleman is a great friend of mine. And in fact, he and I are tinkling with some ideas right now to do something else. Uh, but I, I was also in Barnum, the musical Barnum, oh, right, Barnum. And Cy Coleman wrote the music for Barnum. So he knew you? Yes, is he knew it? me. And he knew my work. And Joe Layton, who was the original director of The Life, was also the director in Barnum, of oh, Barnum. I see. So uh, they knew my work and they said, we're going to have to do something to get this girl to be a star. And, and they also then know, knew your capabilities. Absolutely. They knew how far you could go. Yes. Because they could have made that role for a nurse, but it probably wouldn't have been as much fun. Well, it, it, was just, it wasn't about a nurse, you <laughs> know. It, just, it wasn't about a nurse. It was, um, it was about what it was about. Um, but they, they were looking for ways to, to use my talents. They knew that I was able to work very hard. And, and I was willing to take risks and take chances. And um, I wasn't afraid of the work. 
because well, it's a lot of work being on Broadway. Yeah, I was just going to ask you. You have two children, you said. Yes. Um, and what do you do with your kids when you're but working when they, when 24 they were smaller, hours a day? When they were younger, I took them with me everywhere I went. Did you, you take them to the uh, studio? I took I mean, them to, to the, the Broadway. Oh, yes. They went to theaters. To, to, the, theaters. to the theater. <laughs> they were at rehearsals. Um, if I had to go out of town, like when we did La, La Jolla, we did How to Succeed oh, in right. Business in La Jolla, and I packed them up and the dog, and we went to La Jolla. And do we they stayed sing? there for three months. Do they sing in front of the mirror like you did when you were a child? Uh, my daughter loves to sing. She likes to write songs as oh, well. And she's right. a really good actress, too. My son, I can only catch him singing in the bathroom. <laughs> he, you know, he puts on his music and you know, he sings in the bathroom. But does he like the same kind of music that you uh, He perform? loves going to the theater. They both do. They both really enjoy going to the theater. I think that's a really important element in raising a child, even if they listen to music yes. on a tape or hear their mother singing the words of a, a Broadway show tune. Yeah. Because you, you, we're losing that intimacy. And I think that's what your CD is about intimacy. Yes. Yes, because this was recorded in a room that's very, very small. Um, it holds maybe a hundred people. And um, I could see everyone in the room and I could hear if they were talking and sometimes they were talking and I said, you can't talk now. Oh, oh you, you know, yeah. You have to be quiet. Right. But so I, you, it made it part of the, the interaction with the audience. And I really enjoy that a lot. And when you sing, you do sing cabaret. I mean, you make appearances like yes. at the Cine Grill and Archie's and different places in New York and, and LA. Do you feel the difference when you're in a cabaret act than when you're on a Broadway stage? Uh, there's not that much difference because it's, really? for, no, for me, there's, there's the immediate gratification of having a live audience and there's nothing like that. So it doesn't matter how they are, if they're sitting in a row of seats or if they're sitting at a table it drinking? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I, I connect with them. I connect with them here in the first or the second row and I connect with them way up in the balcony. But the good thing is, when you're in a cabaret, you point at people yes. and they talk back to you. Yes. But in, when you're in the theater, they don't talk back to you. Well, sometimes they do. Oh, do they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes they do. So you can see, you really do see their reactions. I do see their reactions as far as I can see. You know, sometimes you know you get past the tenth row and you can't really make out the the uh, particulars of a face, but. Um, but you can hear and smell. Them. You can hear and you can feel the energy. And, and you know, people with glasses, you see those glasses, you know, reflected, the light is reflected in the glasses. I, I, there's nothing like it. Oh, there's nothing like having you on the show today. Thank, Thank you, you for being with us. Thank you for having me. And don't go away because we'll be back with Tomislav Podreka and his tea service. Yes, we're going to be back at the Archie's Place. I mean, at, yeah, Archie's uh, Place in December. And we're at the Cine Grill this Saturday night, the 30th, 8 and 10 p.m. I know. We'll see you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and we're back with Tomislav Podreka, a native of Melbourne, Australia, even though his name doesn't sound like that. He studied philosophy and literature at Victoria College and earned batches of black belts in martial arts. And he's worked as a professional ballroom dance instructor. That's, That's very Aussie to me. <laughs> How did the tea come into this picture? Oh. My parents have always been involved in restaurants. So for most of my life, I've been in a kitchen somewhere along the life. If you're a martial artist, you drink a lot of tea. Most of my instructors were Asian, that's what they did. So um, my, my parents are Slavic, so they drank tea more so than coffee. Coffee only ever came out in special occasions. And of course, I live in Australia, it's a Commonwealth country. So we, we have afternoon tea there, it's a regular format. We have uh, working bees, you know, when you clean up the school and they will have tea and scones waiting for you in the afternoon. So oh. it was something I grew up with. Instead of a coffee break, you Absolutely. had a tea break. That's correct. So how did a ballroom dance instructor even though you were hanging out in restaurants, mm -hmm. still get into this thing. Why didn't you stay with ballroom dancing? It, oh, ballroom dancing was very frustrating. I love dancing. The problem with it is that a lot of people would come to learn to dance and then double you as a psychiatrist. So you'd be like <laughs> foxtrotting around the floor and they'd be, you know, I've had a hard date last night. And it was like, no, this wasn't something that I really wanted to do for the rest of my life. So 
I love chefs. I love, I love eating number one. But anything that'll give me a reason to go to a restaurant and hang out in their kitchen, that's... That will do yeah, it. Yeah, that'll do it. In other words, you, you need martial arts to keep people away from your food? Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, I wish, I wish. Thank you for the flattery. So, no. But you did a lot of martial arts. Was that a really uh, an interest or a physical? It's kind still of thing? a very strong interest for me. It's, oh, it uh, is. But it's become more of a philosophy now. I'm, I'm like you know, I studied philosophy and literature, and to me, the uh, you know, the, the the concepts and the and the driving force behind why people do things was far more interesting. So martial arts started off as any little boy. You know, I wanted to be like Bruce oh, Lee. Right. But um, if you know much about Australians, not many of us have English-sounding names. And most of us are active, very, very active. So, so it is kind of that immigrant name we talk much. about. Absolutely. I wouldn't think of, what, what's your background? Uh, my parents are Croatian. Croatian. I wouldn't think that Croatia was a tea drinking area. All Slavic nations are. They, they really are. are, yeah. The, um, and the just black tea, regular tea? Typically black tea. And my parents were up next to Italy, so it tends to be a lighter style of black tea than the darker style, which you'll find in Russia, for instance. Did you go to school to learn about tea? No. No. You just traveled and learned? I didn't even travel. I, I mean, the, world, the tea world will come to you. I have, <laughs> <laughs> believe me, it's business. So what happens is that, you know, I will have hundreds of samples flown to me to cup every oh, day. Oh, people just keep sending oh, them to you? Absolutely. Absolutely. So it is. You know, gardens and brokers, they want you to sell their tea for them. Well, that's interesting because we only think of green tea, mm -hmm. black tea, and uh, n now a few perfume teas that uh, we hear about. Scented or flavored scented, tea. Scented, flavored, whatever yep. you want to say. And I wouldn't think that people would be bombarding you with their tea leaves. Well, we have white tea, yellow tea, we have green tea, oolong, puchong. Um, Those are all leaves. They're, they're all the same plant. They're all come from the same plant. Oh, and tell have, us about that. We have red and, and black tea as well. So the, it's, you have one plant, you'll take a picking off that plant. I'm going to simplify this as much as possible. Yeah, because it's interesting. I mean, yeah. you get a coffee bean and you know you dry it and roast it right. and make something of it. Well, we do very similar things. We, we dry it. Uh, which we call withering, and then we uh, then it's steamed to, to prevent further degradation, and that's the most basic of processes. So now, every leaf comes out and gets dried and steamed. Not necessarily. Oh. Only white, yellow, and green um, are steamed because you do not want any oxidation. But uh, puchong, oolong, red, or, um, or we call it black in the uh, in the West, are all. Uh, allowed to oxidize. That's what gives the, the depth of, of flavor behind it. Is it like aging wine? No, not really. No. Oh yeah, but in four hours. <laughs> oh, you do it that fast? <laughs> so yes. You don't, so the longer it sits around, doesn't make it any better? Well, if it's a pu'er, yes, because a pu'er, um, with a pu'er you, are, you actually encourage bacteria to grow, mm. then you bury it in the ground, I'm being very broad here, and you wait. Uh -huh. yeah, six months, a year, Sometimes you forget and it's there for a hundred years and then they dig oh. it back up and... So that's your brandy. <laughs> that's your brandy. That's, uh, we, yeah, that's who we call blue cheese. Who <laughs> grows, yeah, blue cheese. Blue cheese of tea. <laughs> who grows the best tea plants? Uh, and I, where I, are they grown? My favorite countries, I won't say which ones I prefer, but um, I have a preference for oolongs out of Taiwan and Darjeeling's out of India. But magnificent teas are grown in India, Sri Lanka, Taiwan, Japan, China. Uh, I've had great teas out of Vietnam. They all export? All those they countries all, yes. export teas? Absolutely. Yes. And they're all growing tea? Uh, what do they call it? Tea plants. Tea plants, but yeah. in an orchard? Tea, or Gardens and estates. Gardens and estates. Yes. So they're all, you have a garden or an estate. I think in Africa, the, some, of the, some of the areas are called collectives, that where families will cultivate an a, a hectare or two which is I think about 2.2 .2 acres, I'm not sure, and contribute to a collective. You wrote this book called Serendipity. Yes. Do you want to just hand it to me and I'll okay. hold it up? Done. I think it's a great, um, great cover. Thank it's, you. Tell us about this cover and tell me what Serendipity is. Serendipity, of course, is the name of my company. Um, it was not a deliberate branding tool. We didn't go out and say, we want to write a book and name it after the company. Um, William Morrow very graciously said that they loved what we were doing for graphics and things, and that's why we took the name. 
The book itself is a layman's guide to types of teas, the varieties, where they came from, a bit of history, a little bit of trivia, and the rituals behind all the different teas, all the different countries, the British ritual, the Chinese, the Japanese, Australian. What are some of those different rituals? rituals? Yeah, we have two little teapots here. These are two particularly favorite of mine simply because they're very, very practical. I'm going to hold, I'll hold them up and then uh, he can see them there. Uh, the English ritual is very simple. We all know the afternoon ritual. It's mostly about socializing and relaxation. Um, the Japanese ritual, a lot of people already know, of course, because we have uh, a lot of discussion about um, the philosophy behind Zen Buddhism and its association with, with that particular chanoya. Why do we need all this? That is to, so that you don't have to remove the tea leaves. Okay, so the tea, tea leaves go in there. Yeah. Tea leaves all have a particular time. If it's a green tea, you don't want it to sit there longer than two minutes. So what you would do, let me put him in. You put your tea leaves in here. There are no perforations at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And you have a solid gasket. So unlike a French press, oh. there's no connection to the water once it's been pushed down. Oh, I see. And then you no longer so need to. So that's your tea. And that's comes that. out comes out of these holes, and that's right. you have a little tea pot full of tea. That's correct. Now, what about steeping green tea as opposed to black green, tea? Well, green tea typically likes to have a cooler water. So it doesn't like a boiling point. Mm. It likes to be down to about 190. Ah. And it likes to sit in the water for about two minutes. My preference is very light. I have noted some people like it a little darker because they have trouble tasting it. With a black tea, starts at three minutes, goes to five, mm. typically five minutes. And it likes a, roiling, uh, a full boil, most black teas, not all. And what do you eat with your tea? Depends which one it is. Now, I've, I've paired everything from Desserts, obviously. I do a lot of dessert tasting. Cheeses, caviars, I've done olive oils and wines. Um, you put a food in front of me, I will be very happy to tell you which one I think the That best. W works with yes. it? And if I were going out to buy a tea mm -hmm. from you, what would I look for? Tea bags? You will never find a tea bag in my company. <laughs> never. Why not? Uh, a tea bag is a broken down leaf. The more you break a leaf down, the faster it oxidizes, the faster it stales. From that point of view alone, you have a shorter shelf life. Now, uh, so if you're a cook, you know that a full leaf fresh herb is the best way to go. Right. So the fuller the leaf, the better the quality. The other reason is that it infuses rapidly and it skips a lot of the nuance and the characteristic of that tea leaf. The broken one. That's right. Uh, so, the, so if you have a full leaf, you have a much better, fuller extraction than you would with a broken leaf. Having said that, there are estates in this world which are not great as a full leaf estate, so that the breaking process actually improves the quality of what it would have been. But so, we wouldn't know that unless we came to you and asked you about that. Yes, well, you can always call me. <laughs> I'm more than happy to talk to you about it. <laughs> but, but then, so you can have your tea with everything. What about the cup that you drink it out of? Do I you like have a, any special? I have many, many cups that I love. Um, I do not like mugs. I okay. love thin walled cups. There's a thin closeness. Thin porcelain? Very much so. Um, I like that closeness to the beverage. Um, that, that's my preference. Simple as that. I love... Like uh, a tea and a cup and saucer? Cup and saucer, yep. Or no mug. I, I'm very big on um, Chinese porcelain and Japanese porcelain. But they make cups that are look like mugs, but they're porcelain, right? They're porcelain. I don't actually use the big ones. I use the... the, the, the I have the big ones, but I actually only use the, uh, uh, the smaller, more petite style. And the Asian ones have tops on them, right? Yes. There are two different styles. The ones without the handle is the one I prefer. It's a small, again, very oh, thin I lid. See, I see. And you, you basically slurp your tea between the lid and the cup so that uh, you strain the leaf through. Before we leave, you brought a couple of, um, I'm going to pour these out. I guess I'll hold them up so he can, I don't know if he's going to be able to see these. Oop. Oop. <laughs> can you get that? These are what we call dragon's eyeball. They're known by various other names. They're also known as silver strawberry and silver plum. Uh, they are basically a, a tea leaf. You can see on some of them a little bit of thread where uh -huh. they've been tied together. And a, basically a person ties these together. The outside will open up like eyelashes and the middle will stay together. So you just use one use in one, hot water? Drop it in your, in your glass and watch it open up. 
Okay, well, so, I have something else to show you. This is very strange. This is, a, this is also a green tea, but this one, unlike the other one, does not have the bud surrounding it. The it's other one was green, green tree, green both, tea. Both of them are green tea. This is green, green tea. tea? Yes. It's not green, but we know it's green tea, It's right? green tea, correct. Yeah, this is a very dark green, obviously, and it's all leaf. It's been tied together in the middle, opens up like a pom-pom. So this also, you just put hot water put on it, hot but water not really hot, hot. That's and then this. These are tow chart. Let me open one up so you can. These, these look like little tea, oops, your hand's in the way. Oops, there. Sorry. Let me. There. These look like little tea bags though. Well, they're actually this. They're wrapped this little piece in right cotton. Here. And all we've done is it's a compressed pu'er. So it is the tea that has been aged. And you drop that in your cup put a saucer over it, forget about it for 15 minutes with boiling water, open it up, it'll be, it'll have um, completely um, fallen apart. Give it a stir, the leaves will stay at the bottom and it'll come out thick and black like an espresso. Really? Yeah. It smells great. That one smells great. Now, is there any special use for tea? Can you use it to sleep or does the caffeine keep you awake? We have about a minute left to talk oh, about this. You have so far as health benefits, it, it helps to inhibit cancer, it ha helps to inhibit flu, um, it has fluoride, it, it, so it inhib inhibits, excuse me, um, gum disease, cavities, and, really? and caries. Absolutely, it's one of All the, kinds of teas or just green teas? All Camellia sinensis, across oh. the board, to different varying degrees, depending on where they're growing, more so than what they are. So they also, of course, they'll help inhibit skin cancer, they'll help prevent uh, or uh, reduce the, the incidence of aging. It, it keeps your skin tight. So if, if even though it has caffeine, mm -hmm. like coffee, is yep. it a different kind of caffeine? It's what a different it? response to your system because it has different chemicals sitting uh, alongside, or different along components. With it? Absolutely. I see. I see. You have polyphenols and catechins and bioflavonoids and antioxidants and radical free scavengers. Are all in your tea? They're all in your tea, in, as well as A, B, C, D, and E. Great, so, great. So. We, learned, we learned a lot. We learned a lot. Thank you. Tell You're us welcome. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Jen. Thanks for watching us today. And we'll see you next time on the Joan Quinn Profiles. Keep writing to us at 777 South Figueroa, 44th floor, Los Angeles 917. See you next time.